Hello everybody, it's me, it's Ann. I'm back! Ta -da -da -da. Anyway, howdy November. What's up? Yes, I'm being chatty today. I got a couple of things in my haul from the thrift store I want to show y'all. And kind of give you a heads up of where I am in general. Because this sessions class, which is the next seven weeks, because I've already done week one, is a writing workshop that's part of my fiction-focused English degree. And let me tell you, I'm a bit nervous with this one. The professor is a well-published author and he's written for some of the um, franchises that I dearly love, like the X-Files franchise. Um, yeah, so I'm a little nervous with this one. And I've done the second stretch on ears. I now have the 14s up here and the 12 and yeah, got the 12s down here and the 14s up here. And the fourth, the, the 12 tube is the first one that's actually big enough for me to get a wire through. So, yes, I've got other earrings hanging from those tunnels. The 14 tube is so tiny, they actually have that closed off at the back side so that you don't try to stuff other things through it. And it makes it a little easier to, to work with. Like I said, I'm not going huge. I am not doing these, okay? Okay. But um, I'm probably looking at maybe the largest I would go on the lower one is a um, 2 gauge. That's the largest. And that's mainly because some of the decorated tunnels that you can get that have got, you know, medallions over the top or dangly things already attached, you don't really start getting into those until until you start getting into some of the, the larger cages. So, yeah, smaller number, larger size. I just love that. Um, but I'm taking it slow. It'll get there when it get there. I'm also, I haven't done this for several years, but I am also registered in the National Novel Writing Month Challenge. I have to put 50,000 words into a document as a story before the end of the month. I'm actually cheating just a little bit because I have to write a short story for my class and I'm writing the short story so that it can be used as a scene in the novel so I'm getting double duty out of the words. I don't know if that's actually cheating or not. I don't know. Anyway, it all has to be original work anyway so there you go. I did it in 2006 and 2007, and I managed to get all the way through. And then we had some other stuff going on, so I didn't do it for eight or nine. Late nine, we got our son living with us. And then in 10, his then girlfriend got pregnant. And we were all surprised because she'd gone through chemotherapy for uterine cancer and they told her she would never be pregnant again and surprise here was a little man um, and it was a very difficult pregnancy so yeah we I didn't really have a lot of time for that and then he arrived finally in March of 11 so, we had a new baby in the house, so I didn't do it in 11. 
and we started finding out some more of his health issues and some more of my granddaughter's health issues started emerging so 12 and 13 were right out um 14 we moved from west virginia down to florida we were still trying to sort out boxes so yeah 14 was right out yeah i've kind of gotten waylaid in between for several years but i'm i'm going I, the class that i've got that i've got to do this writing for is eight weeks started last week today is the last the, the the day I'm filming is the last day of the first week. So I've got seven more weeks that I've got to be writing anyway. And I'm going, yeah, I can write, no problem. Yeah, I'll be writing quite a bit more than I actually need for class, but that's okay too. If I manage to make it to the finish line, which has to be turned in before midnight on the last day of the month, then I have to decide whether or not I'm going to attempt to get it published. But first I've got to go through all of the edits and all of that lovely stuff. That takes some time too. Um, always so much fun. We will see how it goes. I will put my NaNoWriMo, that's the abbreviation, NaNoWriMo, um, handle and link down in the description and if you're really interested you can keep track of my progress have fun <laughs> anyway going back to the thrift store i love the thrift store let me show you the stuff first i hate the telephone anyway went to one thrift store and found these. These are wonderful. They fit like a dream. They're 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 comfy. And you know, I paid five bucks for a pair of boots that are gonna hold up. And I'm going, yeah, buddy, I can do this. Watch me. And then since we're kind of expecting some Noisy weather this winter. I picked up a pair of these for sloshing around in the slush. Again, they fit like a dream. This was seven bucks. Got the insert liner for warmth. So, yeah, you know, some nice duck style boots. Yes, indeed. The other thing that I got, I'm still looking for a coat. I haven't found the coat. But Somebody was e either bought or was gifted a set of eco tools. Now, look at this. This has not been out of the package as far as I can tell. Or if it's even if the package has been opened, it's it's one of those they stuck their finger in kind of thing and touched a brush. Yes, I'm gonna wash them first. However, four bucks. Four bucks. Four bucks for this set. I'm not angry. <laughs> not angry. This thing is wonderful. I love eco tools. I really do. I love the feel of them. I love the ethic behind it. It's just, it's delightful. Anyway, yes, you can see the roses and spiders are now out and we're looking a little more sparse on the, what's in the base we will see how it goes i'm gonna have to find me a, a thanksgiving headband somewhere of some type yeah you know the flower is kind of cute but most of the flowers are gone you know see if i can find me a headband or some hair clips or something to go with the rest of the fall season see if i can find something with turkeys on it i don't know I'm still trying to get ready to also do the, you know, figure out 
I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to do a 12 days of Christmas or the 25 day. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to handle the 25 day again. That one got to me last year. So I'm thinking it's going to be the 12th. But I've already started getting all of my stuff out so I can do my Christmas stuff. You know, I've got my little angel and my little snowman. And I'm going to get some earrings that have snowflakes or something and that kind of thing. So we will have the Christmas stuff coming in. And hopefully we'll have some turkey stuff before Thanksgiving. And we will see how that goes. Yes, this is a short video. But that's cool. Sometimes you need a short video. Come here, Fanny. Come here, Fanny. Come here, baby. Now, I have told you guys about my dogs. This one, this one, this is the little guy. This is Finnegan. He's all of 10 pounds. He's an Irish Russell. And it's a basically a dwarf version of the Jack Russells. See, if you look, they got those really thick, slightly twisted legs, but he's 10 pounds, and the Irish mostly call them puddins, because one of their favorite things to do is just get up in your lap and lay, and we go take him out for walkies and stuff, and he's just, he's just happy as he can be to be walking right next to us. Our other doggy is 20 pounds, and a little bit too big for me to just pick up like this. I'll get you another picture of her at another point. And Lolly, or Latte, hers the 20 pound dog. Her mama was a Russell Terrier. Her daddy, we're not sure. Traveling man of some sort. Anyway, when we first got her, they, they thought that one of their other terrier breeds that they had, is still another small one, had been the father. And no. At 12 years old, she looks about like a seven to eight month old lab puppy. She's that big. And she's got the legs. And she's got the webbed toes. But, yeah. <laughs> We got When we first got her, I started calling her my angel puppy because she had two white patches on her back that kind of saddlebagged over her shoulders. And she's otherwise beige and cream, but these two white patches literally were shaped like angel wings. So she's my angel puppy. And she's probably the best comfort dog I've run into in a long time. But take her out on a leash and that lab nose gets going. She wants so bad to just run and hunt. And we have to be careful if we get her near water because she'll jump in. Yeah. <laughs> She's so cute. She really is. That's mama's baby. And he is daddy's dog. Just ask him. He said, I'm daddy's doggy. Daddy dog. Yes. Now, when we first got Finney, he was about three months old, and he fit in a shirt pocket. Okay? Tiny dog. And there's one of the pictures of Jim laying on the sofa with one of our cats, who has since passed away. And the puppy, the puppy was up on his shoulder. I actually had to put a circle and arrow to the little dog for people to be able to spot him because he's so small. You know those little miniature tennis balls they have in the pet supplies? It looked like a normal sized tennis ball with him. Little dog. Little bitty dog. He is the only purebred dog I've ever had. All the rest of mine are rescues. All my cats have been rescues. Lolly was picked up from a guy that was keeping the litter in a closet, a closed closet, because he didn't like them whining. And I'm going, 
just because you can't hear them doesn't mean they're not and that they're not unhappy. And they were having to fight for food. She was about two months old when they rescued the pooches. And a friend of ours, our next door neighbor, was running the pet shop that took the rescue pups because the local rescue service was a little too full at the time they got them. So they, you know, the, the um, pet shop took care of getting their shots and all that stuff caught up and making sure they were healthy and then helped with the adoption out. And it's like we went in to go visit and saw this little dog and I went, oh no, there it is. And we got her out of the cage and she snuggled right up under my chin and went, <gasps> that was it. <laughs> we had a dog. So anyway, that is the state of the hand currently. Oh, I got to tell you, I got to tell you. Now, I know some of you get really annoyed when I talk about politics. My granddaughter and my son and my grandson did the stroll through town. And we are not fans of the current occupant of the White House. And the local Republican group had their little booth out for passing out candy. But they also had somebody from their group dressed up in a costume to be the image of the current occupant of the White House. And the kids politely got their candy. And then the costume guy decided he needed to have a picture with my granddaughter. Now she's 13, but she's got some serious social issues because of being autistic. And she was not enthusiastic and expressed her opinion that she really didn't want a picture because of the fact that she disfavors the current occupant of the White House. She was a little more blunt. And I'm going, oh, no, this is when I first heard this. All right, this is just one thing. And according to my darling son, the people at the booth got a little red in the face and got a bit huffy. But since it was a kid, they didn't like, you know, jump up and down or anything. And my son is going, now, honey, that wasn't necessarily polite. And then wraps an arm around her and leans forward and gives her a big grin and a good job and a fist bump where it's like out of sight of the people that it might offend. And I'm going, that's my kid, yeah. <laughs> that's my girl. Yeah, it's like not everybody's kid is going to want to have a picture done with somebody that she don't know regardless. And I'm going, guys, if you had offered to do a picture with the adult or with the whole group, I'd have been a little less annoyed, but no, you singled out the teenage girl child. Nah, yeah, no. It's like, they can't tell that she's got issues, but the issues are not the point. Teenage girl child singled out. Inappropriate is my thinking. But that's my opinion. Anyway, have yourself a lovely day. Try to stay out of trouble. Please remember, I really do not have bail money to help you out. Be good. Mm -hmm.